Hey everybody, it's Jason, Zombie Collector, and I'm going to do a just kind of talk, quasi-film review over Dawn of the Dead, the original 1978, George A. Romero classic. Um, I'm not going to be a poser, I'm not going to try to front, uh, I was a Johnny Come Lately when it came to uh, Dawn of the Dead. As some of you all have seen and heard in my previous videos, uh, I, uh, growing up, I didn't really have uh, any restrictions on my movie watching within, for the most part. My dad was a, is and was a, is a huge fan of cinema, and he let me and my brother and my sister, to a lesser degree, pretty much watch whatever you wanted to watch. And uh, so we would go to the horror movie section like every time when we were kids growing up. Right when we got in there, it wasn't. We didn't run to the kids section. We didn't run to the action movie section. We ran to the horror section. Me and my brother, and Dawn of the Dead was never one of those movies that were. I was on my radar. All my friends never talked about the movie. Didn't know anything about any. And didn't even know who George A. Romero even was. Probably like in 1993, 92, he did a movie uh, based off of a um, Stephen King book called Needful Things. And that's my first time I ever even knew about George Romero, but I didn't know George Romero, who he was then. I just was introduced to him as a director. I had no idea about him directing that movie, but he did direct that film. But that's my first introduction to him, which was not, it was underwhelming, to say the least. That movie is not that good of a movie, in my humble opinion, and maybe we'll talk about it some other day. But um, Dawn of the Dead, I had started, started going to film conventions, uh, in the early aughts, like 2002, 3, 4, all that. So it's been going on close to, you know, 20 years now. I can't even believe it. So it's getting right in there. And uh, I started seeing some of the actors in that movie popping up. One in particular was uh, George, uh, sorry, Ken Foray, who was actually from Indiana. He's from the Bloomington area. And he plays Peter Washington in Dawn of the Dead. And uh, him and I hit it off. I don't know why we just hit it off. Maybe because I was from, you know, Indiana. I'm a very, I was very outgoing. I was like, super excited to see him because he's actually in um, The Devil's Rejects, which was filmed by Rob Zombie. And I only liked his, he kind of like plays a pimp or something in that movie. And I kind of got turned on to him and I want to go, go back and watch his other films. And then Dawn of the Dead was like, I don't know if that was his first movie role, but it was the first major one. And I watched it, and I was completely blown away. Uh, if you have not known about Dawn of the Dead, which they did a remake in like 2000 and like seven, probably or six or something like that. Um, essentially, it is uh, zombies already have taken over, you know, the world. But we're talking about Pittsburgh in particular, and now what's left of the survivors are trying to maintain some sort of semblance of normalcy as they're being taken over by the zombie apocalypse. That's essentially it. The movie takes place like 96% uh, in a mall. And at that time, it was a fully functioning mall in Monroeville, which is where they filmed the movie. Uh, they're in Pit outside of Pittsburgh or in Pittsburgh proper, I guess. But it's like one of the neighborhoods or whatnot. And... Uh, you know, I loved it. It had a lot of, it had the opening scene. There is like a SWAT team being overtaken by the zombies in Pittsburgh downtown. And they try to get out of the town. And they're talking about flying to an island or up north to Canada. And they decide that they see this big mall. And they're like, hey, no one's at the mall. Let's just land our helicopter there. It's four of them. Uh, you have Roger. You have uh, Washington, uh, Peter Washington. You have Flyboy, and then you have um, the, uh, I can't even remember her name, uh, Fran, Fran. And they all kind of work together to make the mall their home. And they do a good job of cleaning out the zombies and blocking the entranceways. And while they're there, they're kind of getting back to like a normal sea of life. They like music, and they got their TVs on while they still have a channel, while there's still there's a channel to watch. They go and uh, get food and clothing, and they work on playing their video games in the arcade. It's just kind of like they're just like, like everything around them, like nothing. The whole world's the whole world's not falling apart around them, 
and then they end up uh, a, a group of like vandals. And you know that thing with rot with um with uh, George Romero is is that there's more danger from humans than there are almost from the zombies, which it's kind of what Walking Dead has always been about. If you watch that, they kind of take a page out of Romero's book is that the real horror element is not the zombies, which is what you'd expect, but it's the actual humans and what humans will do to other humans given the opportunity. And look at what the world is right now, guys. It's not too far off. I mean, like, Romero was, like, calling this stuff out 40 years ago. If humans are given over to their normal animalistic intentions, they will not be... um, decent people given the opportunity to be um, out of control. And this is what this movie kind of talks about. Uh, you know, Romero's very political. He, obviously, he's a very liberal, left-wing, leaning guy. He was one of the few Holly, Hollywood people who said, if, like, I think it was Bush makes, if Bush goes, gets in the office, I'm leaving and moving to Canada. He really did move to Canada. Like, you know, he's one of those guys who did that. Uh, where everybody else said that, but they don't leave the comfort of their homes in the Hollywood Hills or whatever. You know, Romero, who is from Pittsburgh, I think he never left Pittsburgh. Once that happened, he would put his money where his mouth is and moved, I think, Toronto, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, he's always been a very liberal guy, uh, you know, uh, just on his films. And most of his movies were pretty subtle. Some of them had some pretty big overtures about uh, politics and, and, uh, uh, conservative versus liberal mentality, but really it was like kind of like a, you know, us versus them, Democrat versus Republican kind of perspective in his films. And uh, I liked it. He had some racial overtones in it as well to try to to shine a light on some in, uh, definite injustices that he saw in the world. And I, I respected most of his films because he was a director who had a, 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 a um, a vision, and he also had um, an opinion that he wanted to get out, but he and he but he clothed it in the movie, so it's there if, if you want to look for it. It's there if you don't want to look for it. If you're not, you just want to be entertained. It's not hitting you in the face. <coughs> Excuse me. Now later on, in, later on in his life, he becomes kind of an old crotchety old man, and it's a lot more in your face. And he even talks about that in his like behind the scenes and commentaries that, you know, he's just, like, kind of over at this point and it's kind of wants to beat you over the head with a, a club that says, no, this is what I really think. Pay attention to what I'm saying here. But he always has been, like, a very, I think, um, a, a visionary director in a lot of ways. I, one of my uh, greatest sadnesses is I never got to, of all the people I got to meet from the movie, behind the scenes and in front of the camera, Romero was one that just eluded me. Every time I went to a show... He ended up having to cancel or he couldn't make it or he just wasn't there. Or ones that he were able to make it close to me, I couldn't make it. So it just never happened. And then he passed away about two years ago, I think, two to three years ago at this point. Um, so, but, you know, it's kind of funny just to talk about that for a second. You know, George A. Romero, who is known to be a, a godfather of the zombies, like he created the zombie genre, essentially, uh, who made pretty much every movie he's ever made was horror-related. Everything he ever touched was pretty much horror-related. You know, he was obviously more than just a horror movie. He was more than just a zombie director. And if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, and if anybody's watched this, they can correct me, but uh, on his deathbed, what he wanted to do was listen to, I believe, the John Wayne Quiet Man soundtrack. Or maybe he was watching the movie with him and... Um, uh, oh, the I can't remember the actress. All of a sudden, Maureen O'Hare, I'm sorry. And that's what he listened to and or watched uh, on, on his last few hours or whatever on Earth. And so, you know, that's what it was. It was The Quiet Man. John Wayne's The Quiet Man, which John Wayne is the epitome of American bravado and machismo. And he's all, you know, shoot first, ask questions later. And that's kind of what Romero went out with. And so, you know, it shows that, you know, The Quiet Man's a love story, essentially. And that was an interesting perspective. But uh, I kind of went down a little bit there, but hopefully you all enjoyed it. But to get back to the movie, um, so a band of, 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 of um, rebel rousers uh, find out that there are people who are inside our, our four, our four uh, heroes are inside this mall, and they want to get in there because they they realize what they uh, what the four heroes already know 
which is a great place to have a bunch of free access to everything with no real problem. So they end up breaking into the mall and, and, and everybody takes it personal. Flyboy, Roger, uh, Peter, and Fran was like, you know, this is our home. It's like a home invasion, except it's their mall. And they fight back. So they're fighting back from it. And I don't want to give away everything for anybody who hasn't seen it because there, there, are, there are people who die in this movie that are the heroes. Not everyone makes it. Um, but there's some comedy in it. There's some social, political topics and, and, and um, observations for sure. Um, you know, like I said, Romero uh, at that time was not really hitting you over the head with it, but it was there. And then it shows you kind of like a class war with people who are these kind of just dread, dread, dread of society who just try to take from other people. And, uh, of course, some of them get their comeuppance because once they break the doors open, who's been outside trying to get in this entire time? The zombies. And so the zombies run amok. And um, uh, so there's that. But I met, uh, there's two zombies that are really famous in this movie, maybe two of the most famous from uh, from the Dawn of the Dead movie. Like I said, I've met the entire, most of the entire cast before, in front of and behind. And uh, I, there is a married couple, I believe Sharon and Clayton Hill, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, maybe her name was Sharon Coretti or something, but she was married to, I believe, Clayton Hill. They were zombies and behind the scenes people. I think he was like the prop special effects guy, and she was maybe wardrobe, but she was the one who wore a nurse's outfit as a zombie. And then he wore like, he was kind of like the sweater zombie. And if you know the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. They have kind of distinct uh, uh, scenes in the movie that you would recognize them. And they were doing these shows. I think they, I know that the gentleman has passed, the sweater zombie has passed since then. Um, I don't know if his wife has passed, but I used to go to shows a lot and, uh, I, I asked them, and they we kind of became friends. I got to got to know them. We went, they went to a lot of shows, and when I say shows, I say I mean conventions. And I asked them if I can ask because they you know they've been married at that time like fifty years or something. And I said, you know, if I can ask you, you know, you've dealt with Hollywood. They've been in and out of Hollywood. They obviously dealt with a lot of film in Pittsburgh where they're from. And I said, you know, what would you tell me? is the key to your marriage. What's a key to a marriage? And uh, without skipping a beat, they both said laughter. And I thought that was so interesting. For me, two people who are known for being in a horror movies and zombies, and uh, of all the things you could tell a young guy, because at the time I was in my 20s, and he goes, the most important thing to make our marriage work and make everybody's work is being able to laugh together. And I'll never forget that because they and they you know they were loving each other, hanging on each other. I mean, nothing, nothing weird. I mean, like just a lovely old couple who just loved each other. And and I'll never forget that as long as I live. That they they said the thing that makes the most important thing in a marriage is laughter. And I could not agree more. Um, I think laughter is is so important. I, I think people who come to my channel know I don't take life too serious. I try to laugh and have a good time. Um, but anyway, so let me show off a couple of the movies. Um, I think there's, there's probably like 10 different variations of these movies at this point in the movie, uh, out there now with Blu-rays and DVDs and all that. But here are the three that I have. First up, it is the, is this the called the Divi Max special edition of, uh, Dawn of the Dead. This is kind of iconic. This is what the uh, poster looks like. You see, and on here it has like some special features. This is one of Tom Savini, who's very famous for his special effects. This is one of his very first special effects movies. I think he did a few others, like maybe Martin beforehand, and uh, a few others maybe. I don't know if he did. Uh, there's always Vanilla. I don't know if there's special effects in that, really. But I think he did Martin. Uh, I think, but this, is, this came out in 78, so this is like early on in his career. So this one here, and then right here is the inside. Now I have to talk about this. This is from Wild and Woolly Video in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. But that say that for another day. Um, here is another one. This is the uh, anniversary, right? Anniversary edition. This is also a cool cover. Again, the this is the helicopter. Uh, no, this is from the, when they're at the helicopter station. 
the zombie that he runs into, Peter Washington. But here you have the, the this one. You have that. This is a great this is a great one right here. I love this movie of uh, that that edition. And then this is kind of like the the encyclopedia of Dawn of the Dead fans. This is the ultimate edition, and I know they've released a Blu-ray version or a couple still books. I don't know if the I don't know if any of them come close to this. They may they may even they may even exceed this. People who know about this different variations of the Dawn of the Dead movies, if somebody can let me know. But right here, there's four different discs. You have the disc one is the U.S. theatrical cut. Disc two is the extended version. Disc three is the European version. And disc four is documentaries. Now, the theatrical cut, uh, uh, Romero says himself, is his cut. That's the cut he uh, he, he uh, subscribes to. So I know there's the extended cut. They just put a lot more filler in, which I enjoy the most because I like more story, more backstory, more just uh, uh, explanation, more just, you know, filler. A lot of people think filler is not good, but I, if I love a movie, I want as much of, a, of it as I can get. And then the European cut was a Dario Argento cut of the film, which focused more on gore and his uh, Goblin soundtrack from the guy, the band Goblin, uh, who did like Suspiria and a lot of Deep Red, and a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Argento movies in Italy. Uh, so let me show you here. So the front right here you have Roger, I believe, which is now kind of giving it away. If you see that, this is a great image here of the helicopter, like helicopter area zombie, because he's not really the helicopter zombie. And then you have Flyboy and one of the other zombies. It's great. Flyboy is actually from Indiana. And then you have Fran up here. And then you have George A. Romero with uh, like kind of like a comic book that came with this. And then here's all the discs. You have the uh, uh, machete zombie. You have this Peter Washington with his... Uh, SWAT team gear. And then you have the European, I think, cut of the film of all the zombies. And then you have, wait, this was like hands maybe? Or like, like some kind of zombie eating something, I guess. So this is the uh, ultimate edition. And this is my, I just love it because it's everything. I remember when I bought this, it was like, I don't know. I hardly ever spent big money on, 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 um, Don, on any kind of movie box set. That probably when it first came out was like 40 bucks. I couldn't spend the money fast enough. I just love the movie. Uh, once I uh, first watched it, I rented it uh, after I talking to um, Ken Foray, and I was like, man, this movie's awesome. How did I miss this back in the 80s? And then I went crazy and bought everything I could. I have posters, lobby cards, autographs, action figures, everything of Dawn of the Dead. Now, I don't know if I have all that stuff anymore. I might have sold some of it. <clears throat> some of it's been lost between here, there, and everywhere. But I did get to hold on to the DVDs, of course. So, this is kind of my love letter to probably my one, if not my favorite horror movie of all time. Uh, I just love Dawn of the Dead. It means the world to me. It honestly does. I look forward to sharing this movie, hopefully, with my son someday. He's probably at the age now he can handle it, because... The gore that we think is gory nowadays is nothing compared to 1978. So he probably could actually handle it without much uh, howdy-do, but we'll see. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. And for anybody who's watching this long into it, uh, again, Dawn of the Dead, the original, 1978. Please, if you can, let me know what you think about it. Have you seen it? What are your thoughts? Um, pro or con? And uh, like I said, for the guys out there, there's other variations of this movie. Let me know. So I do want to try to track them all down for my own personal collection. So until next time, guys, scare you later.